This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to use high dynamic range media in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll illustrate color spaces and LUTs. Now I'm using terms like Rec 709 and Rec 2100. These define color spaces. Rec 601 is the color and grayscale definition, the color space for standard definition media. This means both NTSC and PAL. Rec 709 is the color space definition for HD media, and it's very similar to SD color space. In fact, the standards bodies have adopted an equivalence between Rec 709 and sRGB. We work with sRGB all the time inside Photoshop. That's why you can create a picture in Photoshop, bring it over to an HD project, and the colors don't shift. Rec 2020 provides wide gamut. You think of that as more saturated, wide gamut color space. It's part of the Master Rec 2100. Rec 2020 is similar to Display P3, which is the current state of the art in HDR. And Rec 2100 is the ultimate definition of HDR. Rec 2100 provides an overarching standard for the entire spec. Remember, it's more pixels, brighter pixels, and more saturated pixels. And the three most popular distribution standards for HDR are Dolby Vision, HDR10, and Hybrid Log Gamma. Why should there be a single standard? We haven't had to deal with a single standard our entire professional life. It continues in HDR. I've talked about color. Let's take a look at what that means more specifically. The color triangle on the left represents the big, that which is colorful, that represents all the colors that our eye can see. The inner triangle is the number of colors, the range of colors, that are covered with the Rec. 709. And remember, whenever I say Rec. 709, think HD, high definition media. Rec. 709 color space, it is the same as sRGB. On the right-hand side, we're seeing where we're going. The inner triangle is Rec. 709. The middle triangle is where we are now. This is display P3, more saturation, especially in the reds and the greens. The outer triangle is Rec. 2020. That's where we're headed. Even more saturation in the reds, even more saturation in the greens, a little bit more in the blue. But you can see that even with these new standards, we're still not equaling what the eye can see. But it's better. HD is Rec. 709, the inner triangle. P3 is where we are today. The outer rectangle is where we're going. The other concept, and this is the one that I think affects us the most, is this concept of linear versus logarithmic. If we take a look at this grayscale on the left, this is a waveform monitor. I use this from Final Cut, but it works exactly the same in Premiere. When we record traditional HD media, we record our black levels at zero, our white levels at 100%, and all our shades of gray in the middle, and it's recorded in a straight line. There's a one-for-one -one relationship between the amount of light on the outside and the number that we record inside. But it means that if our highlights are really hot, if we're in a brightly lit scene, we're crushing a lot of highlight information into the very top end of that linear grayscale. By recording log, we're recording logarithmically. We capture the same amount of information in the black and the midtones, but we're recording far more information of the highlights, but squishing it into a very small space. Now, when we open a log file inside an NLE, it has a very washed out look because we've captured this visual information from the point of view of the sensor. When we decode the log file and move it from 0 to 100 scale at which we recorded it and stretch it out so it becomes HDR, we're able to unpack all of that grayscale information and provide highlight detail much greater than we would ever be able to see inside a standard HD image. But it does require a color pass. With linear grayscale, I can shoot it and put it on the air seconds later. With log or raw files, I can shoot it. I have to take it through a color grade to unpack all that grayscale information, properly place it within the spectrum of my project, whether it's HD or HDR, so I can make it look pleasing to the eye as opposed to pleasing to the sensor. 
The advantage is we get much more highlight detail. We keep more of the shadows. The disadvantage, we got additional processing, not just in terms of the computer, but in terms of our eye to go through a color grade to make this look good. Part of the challenge is trying to figure out how to map the numbers that are captured by the sensor into an image that we see by the eye. And a tool that's very useful is a LUT called a lookup table. This converts pixel values in our image. Remember I said that the raw data which is captured by the sensor is stored as a number. Well the lookup table provides us a conversion from the number captured by the sensor to the number that we want to have associated with the image. The cool thing about LUTs is that they're non-destructive. They can be changed at any time and it's designed to get you close to your look then allow you to tweak each shot as necessary using standard color grading tools. Let me give you an example. Here's our source image recorded in grayscale and it's just a series of numbers where each number represents a pixel in the pixel grid. If I take it to the table on top, notice the number 8, the color, the number 8, gets converted to color 24. The number 15 gets converted to color 10. And I have this conversion table that takes the numbers on the left and converts them into an image which is principally shades of brown, a little bit of green. But if I take it to the bottom lookup table, the number 8, instead of getting converted to color 24, gets converted to color 47. My source numbers are the same, but the end result is an image which is yellow and pink. <laughs> now I grant you, these colors have got to be some of the ugliest colors I have ever used in my life. I cannot believe I'm showing them in public, but the, the concept is that all I have to do is to change this table in the middle. And I can take my source image and translate it into totally different looks. And the nice thing is LUTs don't require rendering. I can change the look instantaneously. My source image is not affected, but the end results are radically different. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to use high dynamic range media in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my website at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 274. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.